morning, and welcome to Voices of Azeroth, a hero's <laughs> Oh my god. BlizzCon 2019, how you guys doing? Look at you. Oh, I feel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit to you right now, I'm feeling like I'm going to cry. So if I do, just, I'm still a hot bitch, okay? Um, I just can feel the tears coming because I'm so grateful. Like, every year, even though I've been doing these voice panels for a while, every year they ask me to do it again, I'm in shock. And I can't believe it because this is just such a huge honor. I wish, you can't see what I'm looking at. I wish the cameras could turn so you could see what I'm seeing right now. And to think that all of you got up this early to come at the ass crack of dawn to be at this panel is kind of bananas early. I'm sure you're out having a great time. us is really, really great, and I love you. Um, where do I start? So you can see, who's been to voice actor panels before? Yeah. Yay! I love you. Um, I always have this fantasy that I'd love to have all of you come to my house. That would never work. But like for a barbecue and hang out and take our shoes off and talk acting. And so I can't do that yet, but someday, people, you are. Um, but for right now, if you've seen my voice panels before, you'll know that we have the tables usually. But I try to make it like a living room this year because we're going to go deep. I mean, get your Kleenexes out, people, and we're going to go deep this year, okay? So I got these couches here because I want us, I, let's all pretend this is our living room, right? BlizzCon is our rad living room, isn't it? The whole thing. So to have you here so we could all hang out and talk is really great. And I kind of wanted, like, everybody doing okay? Everybody survived? We're here? Anybody? You're doing all right? Yay. <laughs> Well, I've had a crazy year. It's been a bit rough, but every time I come to BlizzCon, it's, it, I tell people it's better than Christmas. So having said that, I got you guys something. I did. Um, okay, I say that, but I couldn't get 8,000 somethings. But what I have for you is from myself personally, out of my own pocket, I had buttons made. And they say Blizzard's VO Guild. I don't know if the camera can see this. So I've got these cool buttons, and they're just from love because they... You know, I want to tell you, as some of you know, the voice actor stage started seven years ago on a tiny ass little, on a tiny panel. <laughs> I'm going to get fired on Monday. It was nice knowing all of you. Thank you and good night. Um, it started seven years ago, and we started, has, was anybody at our first voice actor stage? Yeah? Oh, you got the shirt. We had like 150 sinks. It was like seats. It was super hokey McPokey pants. And now, the World of Warcraft panel is on what stage? The mythic stage, right? So I'm so excited. So because of that, my, I'm trying to say I got these buttons for you as a note of gratitude, and I love you. Because, with, because of you, that's why we're standing on the mythic stage right now. So mad gratitude to all of you. I love you, I love you, I love you. But the problem is I can't throw. So how the hell am I going to get these buttons to you? Buttons! <laughs> buttons! <laughs> buttons! Uh -oh. Hold the buttons! Buttons! <laughs> buttons! <laughs> buttons, and I think there is candy as well! <laughs> buttons! The left. Let's go this way for buttons! <laughs> buttons, watch your eyes! <laughs> watch your eyes, there you go! We have buttons! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> over this way, Darren, over this way. Darren! Darren, this way. This way. Buttons! Darren. Mike, anybody, this way. We are this now way. out of buttons. Are they done? We're out of buttons, Andrea. You need more buttons. It's OK. Two things. I have Deliver more. Deliver the button, Caleb. So find me on the floor. Find me at the Hilton later. I'm going to carry a whole bag of buttons around with me. And for those of you who are streaming this, I also have some at the office I've saved for people who couldn't be here. I don't know where, what camera to look at. Um, but for those of you who are not with us, wherever you may be around the world, tweet at me and I'm gonna send that button to you straight away on Monday, okay? I love you guys, so that's it. All right. 
So I have many good things in store, as you guys know. Anybody saw Jaina sing last year? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda screwed myself with that one, because I'm like, Shh, what am I gonna do now, damn it? So, uh, but it's gonna be really great. So, uh, all right, so let's start the party. So, for those of you who don't know me, not to be weird, but I'm Andrea Toyas, Senior Casting and Voice Director at Blizzard. Uh, thank you. I started the VO department 11 years ago, and so to think that I started there and we're here is a really big deal. So it's my job to cast and direct every single voice you hear in all our games. So for me, to be here with all of you, who all of you feel like my family, and to be here with my wonderful actors and team, it's a really big deal. So I love you, I love them, and let's get started. How about that? So, uh, I don't see what slide's coming up next, so can somebody, I usually see a slide. Oh, great. Starting us off is my favorite human. I think you guys know him. He's a wonderful artist and a talented friend, great writer, great director. It's my cinematic director, Mark Messenger. Come on out, Mark. I love you. I love you. Thank you for joining. Great, take a seat, Mark. Wonderful, and then coming up next, you guys know her. It's so rad having such a powerful chick at Blizzard. The fabulous, the very talented, talented the very beautiful Christy Golden. Come on out, Christy. Look at her. I love you. And then I found this random guy backstage. He paid me to bring him out. So I'm like, well, you gave me 50 bucks. I guess I'll let you come on stage. He's kind of all right. He does okay work sometimes on a good day. But truly, I'm deeply in love with him. That would be the fabulous, the one and only, Mr. Steve Denuser, lead narrative designer on World of Warcraft. <laughs> Best intro ever. <laughs> Great, there's water for you guys too. So, we've got some panelists for you. Um, who do you think I brought here today? <laughs> All of that, yes, all of it, everybody. Well, you know, the title of our panel is uh, Voices of Azeroth, A Hero's Journey, and I think we've all fallen in love and had our hearts broken by many amazing heroes, and I think all of the characters in our current arc are heroes in their own way, and we'll talk about that. So first, uh, behind the curtain with me, somebody we all know and love madly and we can't get enough of, Lady Sylvanas Windrunner, of course. <laughs> that sometimes I hear I get all, in case you can't notice, I'm hyper and excitable, right? It's because I'm fangirling out. I know them, but I'm feeling like I'm with you. I get to sit here and stare at them, right? Like to have these actors here, I feel so, I'm getting a nerd excitement right now. So, um, all right, next, of course, if we're gonna bring Patty out, then we have to bring out, well, how about, this one will be fine. How about Anduin Rin for the win? <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. All right. It's gonna be great, people. You have no idea what's about to happen later. All right. This is a really big deal for me. I've been waiting so long to get this person here, and so I'm really, really excited because he's epic in every way. So with that, how about we bring out Varrock Sourfang? Azeroth! Ah. Right? <laughs> Let me hear you! Yeah, from the horn! Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. See those people that are here, they actually pay attention to what we do. It's shocking. It's amazing. Um, so our goal is today, I'm gonna put my clicker down. My goal, as I told you, is like to pretend, this, to pretend this is our living room because I want all of us to talk. I really love everybody here and I love all of you. So I really, the goal is for us to dive in and really bring you into our world. And before I kick in, I wanna talk about the fact that from those of you who've been to my voice actor panels know that I've, I've wanted to like rent 50,000 buses and bring you all to the recording studio with me. And I'm telling you, someday I'm gonna figure out like a lottery or, or if you pay me, maybe I'll do it. Something like that will do it. <laughs> But my goal is I really, I, those of you who are here, you love voice actors, I think, as I do, and so I would love to give you a piece of that. 
So this panel today is my way. If I can't bring you to the studio, I'm going to try to bring the studio to you. Does that make sense? So with that, we, <laughs> so with that, we are going to deep dive into our recent cinematics and really talk about it, um, which will be uh, Old Soldier, Lost Honor, Safe Haven, and Reckoning. You guys all know. I, I imagine you know what all those are, right? What's your favorite one of those? Reckoning, right? Uh -huh. Safe Haven. Oh, love it all. But I'm going to start talking to Steve, actually, because I don't even know the answer to this. Steve, how did we come up with the idea of telling these intense stories outside of the game? Because we could have put it in the game, but I love that we have these exterior cinematics. So what was the thinking with that? How did that happen? Well, you know, we, we like to tell stories in the, in the medium that best fits the kind of story you're yes. telling. And when you're doing quests in game, it's really about your character and the kind of boots on the ground view, the things that you're doing, the characters you're interacting with. And there's, there's this whole other layer of story going on with these major characters, the leaders of the world, and sometimes we interact with them, but other times, you know, what they're doing is kind of on a bigger stage, a grander venue than your character might be in. And so that's what this series of, of films, really, they're awesome films, uh, really allowed us to do, was to look back at these major characters of our franchise and lore and really let them shine in an unbelievable spotlight. And everybody did just such an amazing job working on these. It was such a labor of love. Yes. So I'm curious. I mean, literally, I work at Blizzard and I don't even know. But do you, do you start out going, okay, let's take Sourfang, for example, or Sylvanas or Anduin. Do we start out, does the game team go, here's where they are, here's where we want them to get to? Like, do you track their journey or... Maybe, or do you talk to Christy? I mean, how does it work once you decide you want to do it, then what's the next step? What's the process? Yeah, I mean, anytime we're, we're figuring out an expansion, we kind of start putting some stakes in the ground. And then it really is a process of collaboration with a bunch of different people. So the story and franchise people like Christy and Mark, you know, we have weekly meetings and even multiple times a week where we're getting together and we talk about ideas. And then Christy might go off and, and, and bang out a first draft of a script and then we talk about it and, and Mark is thinking about shots and all this stuff. And it, it's just this awesome process of going back and forth and then them going off and thinking about things. And then as the game is developing, we check in with them and say, hey, we thought of this and this and this. So it's, it's really this, you know, year plus long process of collaboration and iteration that's, that just makes everything come together. And it really drives home that it takes a village. I mean, there's, it really, there's so many, and I think everybody here knows that, but it really, especially for this journey, I mean, I think it's a hero's journey for all of us. We're all kind of bringing out things from ourselves and, and bringing it, I really feel like everybody at Blizzard, well, anybody who's creative puts a piece of themselves in anything, whether you're a watercolor artist or this or that, but for all of us who touch it, no matter what degree, I mean, looking at you actors, looking at the three of you, a piece of your heart is in every single cinematic, for sure. So then you have the primary beats, and then as Christy takes your beats and then fills it in because she is, Azeroth lives in your head, Christy. <laughs> so, so do you give her, here's the beats, Christy, then colors it? Yeah, sometimes. It just depends on the situation. Sure. You know, some of these things, we, if we know the characters, and, and Christy knows these characters so well, so we just talk about what how they would react in these situations. And really, storytelling is about taking characters that you know and love and applying different pressures to them. So right. how, do, how does Saurfang react when, when everything that he loves is being stripped away? How does Sylvanas react when she's trying to close her fist and control the situation? How does Anduin react when he's facing this, this he wants peace, but everything is against him? So that's what really makes it fun and interesting and helps us bring those characters to life. It's great. God, there's so much to talk about each of you. Can we just clap for Patty's cinematic? What? <laughs> Patty killed it. Oh, my God. That set, well, we'll talk about all this stuff. But she, I was so proud to see that on screen. So, Christy, it comes to you. And I think we chose a hero's journey because we really are thinking of the hero's journey, a la Joseph Campbell. So you want to talk a little bit about your process and how that works? Yeah, it's, it's as, as Steve said, it's extremely collaborative, much more than I think people think. Um, we do talk with the writing team, we get ideas from everywhere, we, we check in each stage of, the, of that, that particular journey, and, um, you know, some of them we get to a point we're happy with in maybe 10 drafts, and other times it can be like 30 or 40, because something that sounded great, looked great on the page, doesn't read well, or something that sounds great and reads well, when you get into boards, it's not working. So we're always, always iterating down, you know, until we get to a point where we have to turn right. that over. Uh, and by the way, I just want to make sure that we talk about this. I, I wrote the three scripts 
um, three scripts for this, but the wonderful Matt Burns mm -hmm. gave us Old Soldier. And I out. have to say, that was a tough act to follow. Yes. So, so give it up for Matt. Matt. Perfect. Christy, do you want to walk through a little bit of the hero's journey? I don't know how many people are familiar with Joseph Campbell's approach, but um, just the hero, the steps of the hero, because yeah, I, 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 we could argue that each of our actors here are, have kind of, are going through these journeys in various ways. Yeah, it was really interesting when we were kind of um, looking for a title for this. I just kind of sat back and I reread all the scripts and stuff, and I was like, well, this is the classic hero's journey. All 12 points are covered. We have the, um, the world of the beginning, where the ordinary world, we have the call to adventure, we have the refusal of the call, we have the meeting with the mentor, friends, and I, so it was really uncanny how it all played out, and also I realized that all of the characters have gone on their own journey, nobody is the same at the beginning as they are at the Absolutely. end, and that's really exciting when you realize that you've kind of tapped into these, you know, things that we all resonate with. Yeah, the zeitgeist that we all carry, because I think we're all, we're all, I mean, I think, you guys have been to the panels enough. I, we always, I feel like we're all heroes, because we're all, I read a meme recently that said, sometimes just getting out of bed in the morning is courageous, right? Because we know it's a struggle, man. Life's rough. And so I think as humans, we get that. And as our actors, we get that. And as our characters, we get that. Cool. So the market comes to you. So I take it you're part of the process all the way through. And are you then taking the written word and interpreting it and making it your vision? How does that work for you? What, what, how much of Mark do we get in there? Well, it's, it, you know, like the guys are saying, it's, it's really collaborative all the way through. We have a real strike team approach to these movies where Christy and I will develop the script, you know, working with Steve and the game team, our other writers, you know, we get a writer's room together and really jam stuff out. Um, but then we get this little group that comprises like our editor and our storyboard artist and our previs artist, and we meet daily if we can you know, and we really, you know, just work on the animatic together, and things are gonna rise to the surface. Um, sometimes people are gonna see something in the cut one day and go, you know, I challenge that. I think that that character wouldn't say that right now. You know, we had that actually with Old Soldier. Originally, I think the idea was that um, uh, Zakan would say, my dad died too, you know, and that would soften Sarfang's heart. And then as we got it on its feet in the editorial, we were like, I don't believe it. You know, Sarfang is a crusty dude. He's been through a lot. And I think he needs a little more than that. And so we kind of turned it on his head and we said, what if Zekhan, you know, opened himself up to Sarfang and said, my dad died too. And Sarfang's like, oh, so you think you know me now? We're gonna do therapy, you know? <laughs> and, you know, instead we sort of prolonged the scene. And I think we made it a little more, bit more real in that way. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it continues to be a very collaborative process all the way through. And, one thing and that if I, I may just oh, follow go ahead, up go on ahead, that, Christy. I'm very new to script writing. I come from novels, and uh, so I was constantly learning. Uh, Mark is an amazing mentor, and I learned so much from him. Oh, and the so strike cool. team was awesome because I got to see all the people who do something with this when I'm done with it and find out what their role is and their fee business. So it was really yeah. just... It was a little family there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And on that note, what you guys don't know, which is why I love Mark and his team, is you will shoot this yourself. Like, I see them LARPing in the parking lot sometimes. Like, what the hell's going on out there? <laughs> and you guys literally are LARPing with your swords, jumping around, because oh, yeah. you kind of film it to get a sense of the action. And you even injured yourself one time, didn't These you? These are the actors. We're the frustrated actors. <laughs> you know? So, right. yeah, we'll take a crack at it to just, yes. you know, it really helps the animators, yeah. actually, as we're blocking stuff out. You know, and then sometimes, you know, when we get to the point where our voice actors are doing their thing, they're going to bring something new to right. the table, and we're going to incorporate that and reflect that, and that means sometimes that we'll go back and reshoot and kind of try to, you know, work off of what they created, you yeah. know, so, but you know, yeah, I, we got to have fun. If I thought, if I had more time to think about this, I would have put, we should have just, just play your LARPing footage, because I think it's probably <laughs> better than the final cinematic in the Blizzard parking lot with, like, foam to taped that. to yourself. It's amazing. <laughs> That's the best, the foam. <laughs> And how did you, you did injure yourself. I think you were shouting as an orc one time. Didn't you hurt your back or something? I always hurt my son. <laughs> <laughs> because Mark takes it seriously. And I, somebody blew out their voice screaming as an orc at one point. This is how dedicated oh, yeah. you guys are. I love yeah. it. So let's start talking about Old Soldier, shall we? That was amazing. Um, let's talk a little bit about, your, I want to talk to Mark about his vision. Then I want to talk to you about, I don't want to block you. 
about, because that's when we first fell in love with you and that's when you first got to connect with Sour Fang. So Mark, real quick, or Christy, uh, Old Soldier, what does that piece mean to you? What do you? How do you see it? Old Soldier is, you know, a, a warrior who's on his last legs, you know, uh, a character who's been through everything and feels like he's uh, in a very disillusioned place, feels like there's really nothing left for him to yeah. fight for, yeah. and he's looking for the warrior's death that's been denied him. And through meeting this other young, naive, innocent character, um, he finds the strength to go on, a reason to go on, you know? And so uh, that was something we dug into really deeply, and I think it's something that Andrew mined so expertly as yes. we developed it together. So I'm gonna come to Andrew in one second, but I want you to know that in our cinematic sessions, uh, which we'll talk about more in depth, so for our in-game sessions, actors come in, we run the lines, we talk a little bit. Sorry, guys, I'm sorry to have my back to you over here. Um, but for our cinematic sessions, it's almost like a five, six, seven hour day sometimes. The actors come in, we do a, uh, what's wrong? Do I smell? What just happened? Yep, I was oh, just so better. lonely. It's a photo op, it's better, I get it. Um, but we, uh, we get around the table and we can all talk about this because we've all done it. Uh, we do a table read and then we dive into the script and, and I'm gonna come to Andrew in a second, but I bring this up because I had not worked with Andrew before. Uh, and Zakan played by Valance Thomas, a wonderful actor who couldn't be with us today, an amazing actor. As a director, I've got to take these two actors who've never met, ever, and honestly make them feel like best friends in a matter of hours. I have to connect their hearts. So we start that by going around the table, and I start, and I, because for me, when I see Sikhan and I see Sour Fang in particular, it's somebody who's just at his darkest hour. So when we go around the table and talk about the script, I, I start by saying, you know what, guys, here's my, and for real, my darkest hour. Have I thought about topping myself and all that? Absolutely, it's a Tuesday, of course, why not? Um, but my point is, I have to open up that I know it. I know that long night of the soul. I'm sure we all do. So Andrew, coming to you, and you, we, we dropped you into a really heavy piece, and we went there, and we got dark, and I think there were tears, and it was intense. Talk about it, what it was like to come in that day and voice Sour Fang in that journey. Yeah, um, you know, thank you guys so much for having me, by the way, um, and and to Blizzard and you guys. My God, how about this? Huh? I know, like it. Pretty sweet. Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, I, I kind of came in towards the end of this character, you know? And, and so I'm new in the room, but the, the story that we're telling is winding down for this guy, you know? And there's been a, there's been a lot of baseball that's been played before I showed up. And, uh, you know, um, so there was this, you know, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of acting jobs, um, you kind of come in at the beginning and then everybody kind of gets to know each other and it grows. And this was a little different. It was kind of in reverse. And, so uh, Andrea and, and the team did this sort of deconstruction process, and I had no idea what I was getting into. I thought I was just showing up and, you know, make some noises with my face and go home, <laughs> you know? Um, and it was not that. I mean, this was, this was going to be a much bigger deal, and I knew that right away when they were like, oh, we're not even going to record anything we're just gonna for talk. hours, you know? Let's just talk about kind of who we are and, and find out who this guy is and how does he relate to you know, these people, um, you know, and so all of a sudden, the next thing we know, I'm in a room with people I just met talking about these really uncomfortable private things that, um, you know, at, led us to sort of, uh, you know, start to kind of like, let's wash all that away, let's get comfortable, and now let's, uh, let's dig into who this is, you know, um, so it was, it was a real actor's journey. It was, it was my first real experience doing something that was that, um, you know, in depth. Um, and it was super intimidating and it was scary, but I, I think most rewarding things are. So right. it was, uh, yeah, it was incredible. It's really great. And the reason we do all that improv exercise and, and go deep is because from the director's perspective, in order to make these lines ring true for you, I have to get Andrew and Zakan's heart, as actors, as humans, their real heart into the lines, into the script. And if they came in, I'm like, nice to meet you, let's read the lines, they would have read them, they would have been great. But I need all that subtext and emotion, so by doing the improv, like, when improv, but you could even say how you felt, it was hard. I literally had uh, Andrew and Valance, I had Andrew pretend he was on a bridge in real life about to jump, for real, and then Valance was like a jogger coming by and they saw you are about to kill yourself and was trying to talk you down. And I think by the end, Valance was sobbing like, please, man, don't do this. I'm, I'm your friend, I'll take you to breakfast. Remember that one? That got really real, really Yeah, quickly. and well, you know, what you didn't know is that 
we had, me and this guy, Valance, had spent about an hour not talking to each other in the waiting room beforehand <laughs> because we didn't, yeah. you don't even know if you're going to be working with the guy next to you. He could be doing something else. So yep. everyone's just kind of like, <laughs> like, how'd I know we were going to have this horrifying, like, breakdown about an hour from now? <laughs> You know, we might have put in a little more effort <laughs> to get to know each other, you know? But you did it beautifully. That was an intense improv. It was really full yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I love these actors. I mean, someday I'm going to get you to the studio or have like a studio cam you can log into, which that would be great. So you can see what's happening. It's really, really, yeah, we'll do it. It's done. Michael, my, my producer, Michael's here. He'll make it happen, right, Michael? <laughs> He'll do it. <laughs> Um, so great, so uh, we've got, there's, I want like a three hour panel, maybe next year we can get a three hour panel because we got to keep moving. So let's move on now because now I want to go to uh, Lost Honor. Now that was great because then same process starts again. You hadn't met Josh before. Yeah. Right. And we're all going to take our shoes off and sit at the table and improv this. Yeah. So uh, We're going to sit exactly alike too. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at that. So Mark, for you, Lost Honor, quick, what do you, what's your take on that one? You know, Lost Honor is a really, you know, it's just really dear, dear to my heart, to be honest with you, because um, you have Anduin, who is just at the end of his rope. He's a young king. He just doesn't know what other tricks he's going to pull out of his hat to, you know, to make something happen for his people. And he has really one card left to play, and that card is sitting, yep. sulking in a cell, you know, and down in the stockades. And so Anduin goes there to play this one card out and see what will happen. Um, and, you know, I just have to say, the moment in the, in the writer's room, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we came up with the idea that, you know, Anduin would get Sarfang to say the thing that must be so hard to say, which is, I hoped that you would stop Sylvanas. And Anduin says, I can't. And he turns to go, opens the door, not alone. When that thing fell Spoiler, in the Mark, writer's room, Spoiler. everybody just went, oh, we're doing that, right? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I think they talked the idea of, a, of Sourfang, Varrock Sourfang saying to a young boy, I thought you would stop her. I mean, that's a really vulnerable moment. So, Josh, I mean, I could just have a panel all about you. Uh, but for you, that, that was a moment. I mean, we've seen you grow and become strong and, and try to lead bravely. How is that for you? Well, I mean, I, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but I, I have been a very, very avid WoW player since Vanilla. And so I'm He's very one of us. familiar. He's one of us. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm very familiar with Anduin's journey from the very beginning, from the time he was the little kid that, well, my first character was a horde, so I was always trying to attack him. And, uh, it's a secret. It's a secret. Now I have him alive. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I mean, I've, I've seen him grow up, and I've, 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 uh, you know, been a part of uh, of a bunch of the other things, and I've, I've seen, I've seen him lose his dad, and I've seen him lose. Uh, or, or have to figure out now what to do, and uh, and and yeah, just it, it's it's been a beautiful development seeing him almost have to find these surrogate father figures and and Gen and and also in and Sourfang. I never and, thought about that. Yeah, Sourfang is a father figure to him in that regard. Absolutely, I didn't... In, in in a weird way. Right. And um, so it's it's been it's been really fun getting to be a part of this this world that I've kind of been a part of from in a different way for yeah. for such a long time. And yeah, I mean, sometimes I still like to log in and, and walk around Stormwind and just say, this is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> These are my stockades, it's my auction house. It's my other auction house. <laughs> yeah. I, like it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And one thing I remember about that improv, and Andrew might remember, is that you had injured your arm that yes, day. Yes, I, uh, I tore all the tendons in my shoulder like 20 years ago, and I only just got it fixed last year. Yes. Um, and so when I finally got it fixed, I was in this immobilizer sling. And I had to come to this session, this improv session, with basically this, this cyborg arm that couldn't move at all. And but I liked it because I think it added a degree of vulnerability to you because you were, it was so interesting because with, we always say as an actor, bring you that day. Don't come in thinking you gotta be a rock star actor, you bring you. And you coming in kind of injured and vulnerable, kind of like a broken little bird, kind of helped the scene because you were vulnerable walking into that, that cell and he closes the door. So I, I remember clearly, at one point when we improv, you were both kind of on your knees and you were injured, and it, it was so powerful. Do you, do you remember the feeling of being vulnerable with absolutely, that? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I had to take so many other things into account just so I wouldn't re-injure it or, 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 or mess it up and, and, uh, and, and not have to think about it. And, and in the same way, that's pretty much where Anduin's at when he's in this cell, where he's got all of this other history, 
and he's got so many other things that he's thinking of. He's, you know, he's got his father in his head, he's got Sylvanas, he's got his people, and he still has to put all of that aside to just deal with what's happening. It, it was a really weird life metaphor for, for what was actually happening right there, but, um, and, and I just, I, I just wanna let you guys all know how, how giving Blizzard has been for actors in terms of getting us there and getting us to be uh, a part of this story because usually when we go in to, uh, to, to do something for a video game, it's just us by ourselves in a room with script and it's not even any context, it's just our lines and, and we're there for four hours and we're just saying stuff. But whereas with this, we, we, we see the other actors, we, we are face to face with the other actors, we're, we're interacting and, and, and we're, we're more further exploring these characters. We, we don't get that really anywhere else. Well. It's, it's amazing. Well, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, and, I, and not to be all kumbaya right now, but I gotta thank all of you because these three people over the last year or two years have given your hearts. I think we have literally, all, we've all cried together probably multiple times. We have had really heavy sessions. So speaking of that, I really wanna talk about Safe Haven because Safe Haven to me, who loves Safe Haven? I just, with Thrall, yeah. I lost my mind. Um, can we, I just wanna do this, because I need to do this. I happen to know a little bird told me, because he emailed me and told me, that our fabulous Chris Metzen is watching right now. He told me he would be, because he wanted to be here. Can we just yell out loudly, if don't, just nerd out with me for a second, because I love, he's my war chief, yo. So let's just yell out, I love you, Thrall, right? In the count of three, Chris is watching. I want him to hear that you love him, okay? Three, two, one. We love, we love you, Chris! Oh, Chris, we love you. Wherever you are, we love you. Because that guy, that guy. That guy. He's like, oh, he, he, it's hard because I think he started voicing stuff early on when we were still, you know, kind of a smaller company. And so he always feels like he's not an actor. And back me up here. He's a killer actor. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous uh, what he brings. It, it was amazing. So I want to talk about that because we really had a lot of fun uh, with Safe Haven. Chris came in, I tortured him, I'm like, Chris, take your shoes off, we're gonna improv, we're all gonna cry, and he's like, I'm sorry, what exactly are you talking about? <laughs> uh, but he did. So do you remember that day? Do you remember working with Chris Metzen and diving into that and chewing on things? Yeah, you, you, that, that was incredible. I mean, it was yet again one of these opportunities where I've walked into a room, I didn't know who anybody was, and there's, you know, this colossus figure in the Blizzard <laughs> world Physically, too, he's enormous. No, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, I, I think it, I think it helped that I didn't really know who yes. he was because you know I got to see the guy for who he was. This this human being human. with, you know, insecurities and 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 you know senses of, of of wanting to be perfect when we never are, and and just like all the little fears and and little things that that ha that is the human experience, you know. And so I kind of got to know him from that from that little jumping off point. And uh, the guy is such a talented human being and we did it once in LA and then I came down to Irvine and did it at, on campus and we got to do it on the Foley stage there. And so we were surrounded by swords <laughs> and weapons and it was kind of dirty and amazing and it was exactly where like the final should have yes. been done which was um, you know this gritty you know, uh, sort of hole where, uh, you know, these two, you know, war-torn guys end up. Uh, it's incredible, yeah. And again, as we keep saying, I've got to bring these actors together who've never met and make them fall in love. And I got to say, Chris and Andrew, it seemed like you were best friends for 20 years. You two got on a house, like a house on fire. It was, we, I want them to have a podcast. Maybe if we can do like a write-in petition to have Chris and Andrew, Thrall and Sour Fang podcast where they review movies and restaurants and stuff. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I would love it. I'm so, available. Yeah, let's do it. Well, b while we're talking about safe, let's mark anything or anybody. I'm sorry, I'm so excited talking over here. Uh, safe Haven was really intense. Christy, you wrote that. Yeah. To get the chance to bring Thrall and Sourfang together. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you got to get there. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how was that for you? Just okay? We got to figure out how it's going to work, what it's going to look like, that kind of thing. It, it was really great because um, this is the first time I'd gotten to work with Chris. And, you know, to see him, Thrall, who I had worked with, you know, almost 20 years ago on my first novel for Blizzard, and now he's reading my lines, it was really, um, my heart was very full, very, very full. And I love the tension between the two of them because actually both of them have valid points. And it's, uh, it's only at the end where 
it all comes together. Well, I have a special little gift for you. Are you ready? Um, so I, this took a lot of negotiating, and I had to get a lot mm. of approvals for this. I have a clip that I'm going to play for you that's re I can't, I never thought I could play this for you. This is a, uh, a, an improv session between Thrall and Sourfang. You know, forgive the crappy angle. It's kind of, yeah, oh, it's insane. It's a crappy angle because it was really lo-fi. We threw a camera in the corner because we don't usually record improvs because they're so vulnerable. But for some reason, we had to record it, so it's not the best angle. You know, it's behind uh, Chris, so you're not really going to see him that well. But I thought, even though it's not the best footage, I want to show you what goes on. So this, to me, I cannot believe. I thought everybody was going to say no. Everybody said yes. Okay, so here's the setup for you. Thank you. Well, here's I haven't the... seen it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't need your approval. Here's the setup. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing because I totally got your approval, for the record. Of course. The first people I asked were you and Chris. <laughs> So I don't get people trolling at me later. I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we are on the up and up. Yes, thank you. So here's a, here's a setup so you understand. And it, there's a lot of footage. I wanted to show you the whole damn footage. They wouldn't let me, so I had to cut because we have no time. So I cut it down to five minutes. Here's the setup. I wanted them to do this, the whole cinematic in their own words, right? I wanted them to say what they were thinking. I, forget the script. I want to hear these two characters talk. And so I had them start by saying, Andrew says, you belong with the horde. Thrall says, I belong here. So they do this for quite a bit, which you're not going to see a lot of, and then it's just going to kick in. So I'm so excited to share this with you. You're going to see our studio. You're going to see all of us there. This is a glimpse of our recording studio for you because I love you. So here we go. You belong with the Horde. I belong here. You belong with the Horde! I belong here! Right here! Belong with the horde. Not here. Not here playing make believe or whatever this is. Make believe. This is my life. This is my life. My choice. Do they know who you are? Yeah. Your wife? Your children? Do they know Watch who you are? Watch that. Do you know who I am? Who the do you think I am? You're not going to have a family to protect. You. What do you want me to do? What do you think I'm going to do for the Horde? I want... That I haven't done a hundred times already. Nothing. There is nothing left. You belong with the Horde. You belong here. You've always belonged with the Horde. You belong with the real family, your brothers. You belong with the men who have picked you up out of the mud. You have the blood of your brothers underneath your fingernails. Not this. Whatever this is. I spilled blood. I cleaned up their blood. I've been up to my eyeballs in blood. I've had enough of it, and I'm done. I don't owe them anything. I don't owe you anything. I don't owe anyone a thing. You that is why I belong, belong here. with the whore. I've For done. what? For I'm this? For this? What is this? Look at this. Look it's at not this. about this. This is this. It's not it's, about it's, this. It's an illusion. This isn't real. You're protecting something that doesn't exist. This doesn't exist I don't without to, us. I don't I'll want to talk about it anymore. You I don't want to talk about it anymore. I belong here. You belong with the horde. I belong here. You belong with me. You belong with me. I need you. All right? I need you. The Horde needs you. I was promised a life after this one. And I've watched all of you, my son, everyone, claim it. And so I, I took it all off. And I walked into what was going to be the final dance. And some kid, some kid. What? Who had nothing else to live for but this horde stopped me. And you know how he stopped me? Taking off his own armor and walking like a idiot behind me, following me into this thing. That did not happen. Oh, it happened. He took off his armor. Yeah. Idiot. You should have seen it. It's unbelievable. Well, I couldn't I couldn't do that to him. Is he a troll? What do you think? 
Yeah. <laughs> Farrakh. Farrakh. And the next thing I know, the first cannon of the day sounded, and I just knew that it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about your family. With all due respect, we don't get to have that. We don't get. We don't get here from there. And yet here we are. They're not going to have anything to go to if we don't finish this. There won't be bread to make, earth to farm, a hearth to sit around in the evening. This is a temporary band-aid. This is a this is a, this is this is a dream. A dream that we can make real if we finish what we started. You belong with the horde. Boy, you sound a lot like me. <laughs> In my head I don't know where to take it, because he's right. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna have. Uh... Wow. I know. <laughs> oh, stop. That's all. Oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> it's, oh, isn't that so cool seeing the studio and and that? So what we do? We do that scene. They go right. Let's get behind the mic. Let's go. Because I want everything you heard to be in the lines when they read it. Does that make sense? I want all that subtext to be in there. How was that? That was a great day. That was really neat. It was. <laughs> we should yes. have just made that movie, honestly. What'd you say? We should have just made that movie. I know, I know we should. <laughs> the, beep, the beeping, I couldn't, what you guys are potty mouth, what am I gonna do about the beeping? <laughs> I know, what um, about your potty mouth? I, I, wanna, I wanna say something, because none of that would have been possible if they didn't trust you. Yep. And you create that atmosphere, that room. <laughs> you bring it out of them. Yeah, I mean, if you can believe it, me and Chris met maybe an hour before that. Maybe. Right. That's pushing it. Then we go there. I just no, like that's... to make people cry. That's kind of my special superhero. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Steve. I mean, it, all of us, we trust all of us. I trust you, the game. I trust the writer. I mean, we all, we all, it's so, so kumbaya. So we're running out of time. Let's talk really quickly about reckoning. Oh, my God, guys, right? <laughs> Patty, oh. What was, well, what was really cool about Reckoning, and then we're gonna get into it, is that we had Patty come to, actually, Mark, why don't you talk about it? What we did, what we decided to have bring uh, Patty down to Blizzard. Yeah, that was super cool. That was, that was amazing. Something we'd not done before. We uh, were still in the script development phase. Christy and I were still working on it with our, our uh, writer buddies, and we brought Patty down to ostensibly do live action reference shooting for her character. To LARP, to LARP. Yeah, to LARP. <laughs> but, um, but while she was there, we were like, you know, maybe you have an insight on this because this character is so, you know, part of you now. Maybe, you know, you can help us because we're just, we feel like there should be a moment where Sylvanas speaks some kind of truth and we just haven't landed on it, you know? And that moment where we just kind of, do you remember? We just kind of played. We were playing around quite a bit, you know, improving, just messing around with ideas and, and, you know, the moments, kind of like what these guys did. And you've touched on so many really valid things. Um, but yeah, the truth comes out of that, the frustration, you know, the anger. Um, and it's such an honor to be asked to even be part of that process with people who are so brilliant. I'll get all choked up and... <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. And that specific Plus. moment where um, you kneel down and you said, I trusted you. It was kind of out of an improv that we were working on. And Christy and I just kind of went, oh, <laughs> dang. You know, because honestly, that was what we were looking for, was something where Sylvanas could go where, you know, it's like no one can hear what she's going to whisper in Sarfang's ear, you know, and she's about to take him out. So no one will ever know what she said to him. What she says to him can be true. And she says, I trusted you, you know, and she means it. You know, she believed And for her, this. that's a big step. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't trust no anybody. This other was than supposed Nathana. to be her great general that would carry her on, right? It's like, you know? Wow. It was such a stab in the back. Yeah. I think yeah. the subtext would be Patty, what do you think? 
what she's saying is, you hurt me. She would never say that, yeah. you hurt me. So what, what was that day like for you? I mean, I can see the, I wish I had the footage of that. Patty was in it. I think you had a weapon. You, you were had two. pacing like a wild animal. Yeah. Talk about that day. What was that day like to come to Blizzard and do that with us? Yeah, it was just incredible to be a part of that, to be um, able to kind of play around with what those ideas meant um, and to really call upon that deeper part of yourself. Uh, I just thought it was so thrilling. Um, to be part of that process. And you guys have mentioned so much of the, you know, the things that sort of go into that. Um, I've had the good fortune of working with you guys, so um, you all make somebody feel very comfortable and loved and uh, welcome to express something as dark as that and kind of disturbing um, as making some of those statements uh, without judgment, with really embracing the journey of the character. So. A thrill, honestly, really a thrill. It's so hard for me when I see you play Sylvanas in our cinematics because you are truly one of the lo most lovely, <laughs> kindest, sweetest people that I know. So what do you, how, what's your process? Because you gotta go dark, you gotta go deep because you are the epitome of what it is to be a loving human being on this planet. So what's, you, what's it like for you? How do you make, how do you bring out your inner Sylvanas? You know, on previous panels, I probably touched a little bit on this, Let's, but I think all of us have some kind of trauma or, or dark thing in our lives. Um, and if pushed far enough, um, there's no doubt that that exists in the real you. That the you, you know, you're a fighter. And I think that that stuff, when called upon, just kind of bursts forth. Um, so you call upon some of that and just try to enter that place and call up those memories of the things that you're really upset about. And you've brought up some really good images you know, to, to call upon, even in those improvs, you set the stage for something really messed up. And how would we handle that in that kind of a situation? Humans, right? And we'd be swinging. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we would love to think we wouldn't be, but we, you know, we would be so furious. And so it makes it a little easier to draw upon that fury. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that's helpful. Or <laughs> that's what's amazing about all of you, and I can't thank my voice actors and my team enough, but voice actors, you know, as all of us as humans, we take our trauma and our darkness, we put it in a box, we lock it, put it in the closet. Yeah. We don't open that trauma up. Voice actors walk in and I'm going, I'm gonna need your trauma. Sorry, sign here, I'm gonna need it. <laughs> that day you want to die, I'm gonna need it. So, but you give it willingly and that's why these pieces pop because you put your hearts into it. So. And some days as you leave the studio after that, it can be a little hard to shake yeah. off um, or you'll just feel a little drained, um, you know, of that, yeah. Quite often I go home and I end up, I'll drive home the traffic, two hours to get home, and I'll just start sobbing when I get home because be what we've been through, we're, we're absorbing it all, and I'll just sit on the couch and sob because we've just gone together collectively to an amazing place. And it's a really odd combination of gratitude yes. and reverence for the opportunity and touching on that inner pain. So it's an interesting combination. I love yeah. it. Well, we love our Lady Savannah Windrunner so much. <laughs> uh, I love it. So, damn it, we need longer panels. Do you guys trust me? Do you trust me? So I'm gonna have to cut Q&A like I did last year for Jaina because today in Blizzard's theater, we are going to present live theater to you, uh, Battle for Azeroth in two acts. We're gonna do live reenactments of Lost Honor and Reckoning for you so you can experience this live. So with that, we are going to get set up. I love you. We, I want to, again, this is my final thing to bring you into the studio with us. We've never done anything like this before. No. Uh, we haven't had much time to rehearse, so be gentle on us. No movie reviews, please. Uh, but we're going to do the best we can to bring our hearts and souls to you, and our actors are going to reenact both sequences for you. Are you ready? Get your Snuggies and your, get your, snuggies and your popcorn. So uh, let's do this. All right, guys, let's uh, move on. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Uh. We get the stage lighting, perfect. Which one are you starting? I, should I exit? Sorry. Our scene? Yes, perfect. This is not a good music stand, but okay. Okay, is that okay for you, Christy? Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm how about, yes, we need you. Uh, Mark, you and I can sit over here, sure. lost right? Honor, right? Lost Honor? Yes, Lost Honor. Okay, I'm just gonna great. Here until they you guys know, you've seen the movie before, right? So you kind of know what's gonna go on? All right, so let me get this out of your way. Is this, can we make it darker on stage to make it more theater or is this what we're stuck with? It's, that's fine if I just, it feels really bright still. Maybe we can, it's fine, I'll get out of the way. All right, 
So, Christy, do you want to move so you don't feel like you're... Bring you it can, down. You can, this, you can put the stand. How about we put you over here? This might be better. I rehearsed. Okay. Sit my water. Action. Exterior, Stormwind. Anduin Rin and Gen Greymane overlook Stormwind Harbor. The docks teem with soldiers waiting to board ships while others disembark, bearing bodies on stretchers. That's the last of the soldiers. We'll be bringing out farmers next. When this war began, we were fighting for peace. But now we're just fighting. You're doing all you can to stop her. Interior, a cell in the stockades. Inside the cell is Sarfang, a dimly lit shape in the shadows. The sound of boots comes down the hallway, then Anduin appears outside the barred door. At Lord Aron, you had the chance to take my life. Maybe even end the war. Why didn't you kill me? Could kill you now. <laughs> I spared you because I believed you have honor. Was I wrong? Did you want innocence to burn? The Horde. I have given everything for the Horde! Bled for it! Killed for it! And Sylvanas is destroying it! She will destroy everything. What I want is my horde back. <laughs> Sarfang, tell me why you spared my life. Because I thought, I hoped you could stop her. I can't. Not alone. All right. So good, so good. So Isn't it fun? <laughs> let's, just, let's just do it all day, shall we? Let's reenact everything. All right, so now we're going to do Reckoning. Uh, and to join me, because sadly Chris couldn't be here, I've got my good friend Taryn Gregory, who's going to play Thrall. <laughs> Taryn! <laughs> so great. So uh, wonderful. Let's see. We've got that. We've got you. Du -du -du. Mark, you're good. Uh, let, me, let me check one thing. Hold on. All right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, awesome. Okay. You want to get the body? We'll go get the bones over there. Where am I? Great. So with that, it places everyone. Are we good? Okay. Uh, action. Exterior, Orgrimmar, day. 
Sarfang, Anduin, and Thrall walk along a line of armored horde, which give way to Alliance soldiers. Sarfang's gaze is on Orgrimmar. Thrall notices his distraction. Barak, it is time. Those who defend Orgrimmar are horde as well. Our brothers and sisters. These warriors have sworn to fight for you. Many lives will be lost. Or perhaps just one. He strides forward. Sylvanas Windrunner! I challenge! Mark Gora! The gates open. Sylvanas strides to Sarfang. A traitor leading traitors. Why should I accept your challenge? Because. You want to see me suffer. Mm. Sylvanas smiles slightly. She gestures to the honor guard while Sarfang walks back to Thrall and Anduin. Thrall and Sarfang regard one another. Brother, you cannot win. My old friend, you and I, we don't get to hide. Sarfang looks out over the horde assembled, then turns to Anduin. I set you on this path. And we knew where it could lead. Walk with me the rest of the way. Anduin is moved. He draws Chalamane and extends it to Sarfang. Its light changes from pale gold to orange. From the energy of the priest to that of the warrior, all watch Sarfang and Anduin approach Sylvanas. Too late, Zakan has moved forward and now stands distressed, aside for all. Sylvanas smirks at Anduin before turning to Sarfang. Sarfang and Sylvanas regard one another for a beat. Let it be finished! <sighs> The High Overlord falls. What did you? And so did they. Death comes, old soldier. And all their hope dies with you. You cannot kill hope. No. Ah, you tried at Teldrassil. Hope remains. You failed. You set us to kill each other at Lordaeron. You failed. Still we stand. You just keep Failing! The Horde will endure! The Horde is strong! The Horde is nothing! The world is still. Slowly, the Forsaken Honor Guard turns to stare at Sylvanas. Thrall and Zakan are unsure of what's going on, but Thrall is starting to work it out. We see the satisfaction on Sarfang's face. Sylvanas, realizing what's happened, embraces it. She whirls and cries out to the Horde, the Alliance, and the Forsaken. You are all nothing! Zakan can't believe what he's hearing. Thrall smiles slightly. He now understands Sarfang's gambit. Sarfang spreads his arms, then lifts the split Chalamane. For Azeroth! <laughs> mm. 
If you could see yourselves as I see you. Toy soldiers in tin plate. Beasts. Standing as one. Savor it. Nothing lasts. And as she walks, she dissolves into twisting smoke and is gone. Thrall and Zekan rush to Sarfang's body. What do we do now? We bring him home. Take a bow. Well yes. done, Sylvanas. All of us here. Thank you. All right. Let's do your actress bow thing. Come on, let's walk up. Walk up. Take a bow, the three of you. <laughs> so good. I love everybody. Come on. Draws the con. All of us. That's all. <laughs> There's more. You know when you watch the Marvel films and there's all the funny outtakes and stuff? I have two outtakes of Thrall and Sour Fang in the studio. So let's cue up our, pretend it's a Marvel movie and credits are rolling and this is what you're gonna hear. Let's cue it. Who's it? Are we ready? Hello? We're cutting this. Yeah. I'm uh, thinking, brother, you can't win. My old friend, you and I, <sighs> we don't get to hide. That's right. If I can spare these men, spare our family, I will do it. It is my density. <laughs> that is all I can't do it. It's never mind. <laughs> See, I knew we shouldn't have talked about it. It's too long. I've thought about it. <laughs> Let's go have a beer. This is ridiculous. Let these idiots figure it out. <laughs> so honest, I retract. Have a great day. I nice see you, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> There's one more. One more. Oh, out of time. Is it, could we play one more? It's like 15 seconds. Let's play. Yes! <laughs> one more clip. Brother, you can't win. That's, that's the same clip. The other one? The other clip? You don't. You know, Thrall, sometimes <laughs> I should have just let those two <laughs> annihilate you and your family back at the farm. <laughs> Six miles I walked <laughs> through <laughs> the wheat. So I'm gluten free. You <laughs> know that. Disintegrated farms. Oh my God. And I think that's it. We love you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you for attending Voices of Azeroth, A Hero's Journey. Up next, World of Warcraft.